Uh, hello everyone, it's Artem here. In today's video, I want to explain and show you how I'm building my authentication systems for my apps. I just noticed that people like to overcomplicate things and especially authentication part of the app building. For my opinion, it can be really simple, efficient and straightforward to do. By the end of the video, I will share the code that you see here so you will be get access to everything we discussed on the video, you can find the link in the description and use the code for your own applications. So just copy paste, change your environment variables and push it to production. But uh, right now I will explain how I do this. So I will start with the idea behind this. If you go, if you want to go straight to the tutorial, please check the timestamps in the description of the video. For the dedication, especially in the Next.js applications, I tried several approaches and found, found one that I use the most nowadays, but it's all like pretty similar. Like I tried Clerk, I tried Next Out. It's now called the Out the GS and the Superbase. For my case, I use the Superbase. I like the combination of the database plus authentication is just much more straightforward. So what we will do starts with the you go check the documentation and setting up your your code base. So you add in like a providers environment or variables initializing the client. Then you're building some. UI part, you have some sign up or login pages. After this, you configure your redirect API endpoint. So the red, the URL that the user will be redirected to, and then you have some logic to get client to get the user on the client or server. So just a function that you will be using to get the information about the current user, or maybe combine this function with other to get like to fetch the data or something. And here it's quite simple, but you can like extend it as and make it as complex as, as you want especially with the middleware and the custom parameters that you can send. For the middleware, this is the thing that will run before your request run. It is useful to check for like user permissions or something that you want to be executed before before every request. But you, you need to be careful with this because if you make it wrong, it's really hard to debug. This is the code that will run kind of on the background. You can configure it, but it's hard to keep track of it. So I usually work without the middleware or keep it as open as possible and then add more rules to this. I will show you. In the code base and also we have the custom parameters so this is the parameters that we will send to our redirect url to add some additional logic because authentication can be accessed from different parts of the app let's say one user want to uh, purchase the plan to subscribe to, uh, straight from the landing page so you might p pass like a price id to the to the page or like check out equals true or something. The same goes for the free account. Maybe you have like different free accounts and you want to pass some user permissions or user type. So it's nice to get, get some uh, sent up parameters. So then on the redirect URL, you will be able to execute some logic. So it's quite simple. Let's now go to the code base and I will explain everything. So in the code base, we have them login organizational folder. You see with the brackets, it's not going to affect routine. Then they sign in and sign up pages with the page TSX. And they all share a login component. Basically, the login component is the main logic of the authentication system. I will explain in a second, but before, let's just quickly see once again. So create an account, change the text here, sign in, change the text. For the authentication, I use basically same action for the sign up and login because for my case i don't use the uh, email and password i find it like kind of outdated nowadays so i use the magic links and i use the google or other providers like for the super base usually what i do the fastest and simplest way just go here and open this nice tutorial that they have on the official documentation it's called uh, build a user management app with next.js i mean it's uh, basically everything we need go here go to the building the app and start from the first tab, just install this, install the Superbase, Superbase GS, add your environment variables to your NV or nv.local, install Superbase SSR, and you can read in the details why we need this. The main thing is you need to utils or like lib folder somewhere in the app to store kind of client initialization. And here, like client initialization, if you want to access Superbase on the client, and here we have the supervised initialization for the server. And we are also adding the middleware, as is like previously explained. So the middleware is just the thing that basically will allow, will let us run this update session um, function to refresh the auth token for the user. So the user will be authenticated. And now we are like basically accessing everything we need on the login page. So now I want to show you how I made this, all of this. And to remind you the cleaner version of this code, this is the project I'm doing, working on, but you will get authentication system based on what I will show you here uh, by, by link on the description without all the other logic that I have in the app, just the old system. So check it out. So now we will exp I will explain how I set the Superbase. So I have, I have a utils folder. I have the Superbase folder inside. I have the client. As you see, it's just simple as create a client with the environment variables. The server, again, all, everything copied from the uh, from the documentation, from the project example. 
But here I also add the out option with the parameters of refresh token true, proceed session true, the text session in URL true. Why I'm using this? I found that this let me keep my users locked in all the time. I don't like to be locked out automatically. I want to, they to be locked in as uh, long as possible until they like the token ex expired or they'll send out send out manually by clicking the button so i just add these options i find it's like much better user experience for the middleware i just copied from the update session from the their example and i will remind you don't add anything before you test the code and, and before you're ready for production because i like i miss this a lot of times and it's really hard to debug you will just be like redirected to the or showed an error like randomly and you was, was just wondering why it's happening but this is because the middleware so this is the middleware in the superbase folder and we need one more middleware like the actual middleware for the next.js that will run the code and here we just just copy and paste the code here from here from the middleware we just use in the update session that we defined in the in the superbase middleware right here so basically as you tested the code as you're ready for production here you will add more rules for your middleware let's say you want to protect some roads or like make them not accessible and other so you will first test ready for product go to production and then you will update the middleware this is how i found like the most straightforward way of working with this so you can test and when you're ready deploy it let's see where are we at right now so we discussed ui uh we discussed the middleware um yeah, let's now talk about them, how we like actually authenticate and redirect the users. So this is also really straightforward. First of all, we can send some parameters to our um, sign in or sign up page. And by search params.get, we will have access to these parameters. And we are accessing search param by use, use search param hook from Next.js. How is it going to look in real life? So let's say we have this application and we want to pass some search param. So we will just go like... I don't know, like a redirect equals test and discount equals something. So just like this. So you want you can pass as, as many search parameters as you want based on your logic, based on what you're trying to achieve. Like a create a checkout session, maybe you need a price ID or, or something, discount if a special discount code, like a redirect URLs if it's like some redirect URLs that can be different based on, on the logic in your app. So the, we are accessing all of this. And then we have two simple actions. Why one executed on the client, handle Google sign in. And one is uh, use action state, basically form action that will execute it on the server. Why I made it this way? First, to show you both approaches. And secondly, I found then when I use the sign in with Google on the server, um, like as a, a use action state, I, I find it is for some reasons, it's not redirected me to the to the Google authentic, uh, Google Auth page. I don't know why it's happening. It might be just a bug on my app, but it's nice also to show you both approaches. Uh, handle Google sign in. We are crafting the redirect to. We're using this API out callback, a root that we will discuss. We will be discussing next. We're creating the client. Here we are not awaiting it because this is the client component here from the Superbase client. And we are just initializing the thing here and passing really important to pass the redirect to. So the redirect to will have access to all the parameters that we access it from the search params. We kind of like duplicating these parameters to so our redirect URL. This will be needed later when we be actually executing the logic based on these parameters. Now we're passing the provider here. Important to say, before we continue, you need to go to your Superbase project right here, go to your providers and just make sure you, the providers that you need to enable. Just go here, go to like authentication providers and enable like the providers you need. You see, it's a lot of them. So just choose what you what you want and um, properly configure them. So for like, so for the let's say for the Google, we we will need to pass like client secret client ID, and you can configure. And you also need to pass this callback URL in the Google Cloud Console. So you when you will setting up the project for Google authentication, just copy this and, and use it as a the redirect URL. You will have the option to select the redirect URLs, like all the possible redirect URLs that you allow. So just add this. And don't forget to do this. Yeah, so here we're passing the provider. You see, we're using this supervised out sign with O out, and we're passing the provider for Google. A redirect URL, some discount codes, or empty string if it's nothing, and redirect. For our case, I just, for the test purposes, I, I redirect to test page just to show you. And here we're like, uh, state to show loading and show lo lo loading false. For the magic link state, so the sign, sign in with the email to send a magic link, like pretty much all the same. We're using the use action state. This, it reduces it in React 19. 
by the way, check my uh, Next.js tutorial series where we're building the AI-powered app. I explained how to set up use action state co uh, properly and correctly. So in this case, we, are, we have the stopple with the magic link state. It can be error or success. We have the action that will be executed on the form submission and, and we have the appending state to show the loading indication. And we use an use action state that is imported from React. Right here, use action state. We have access to the loading indicator. We have access to the state. So it's easy to pass errors or success indications. Like um, I find it really a nice way to work in with form submissions. And for the form action, we have this sign in with a magic link. It is validated action. It's just, it's just like a helper that basically will let us to validate the input. So yeah, we're just validating the action here. We have this console log I was using for testing. I will remove it right now. So we are initializing the create client. We are awaiting this. Uh, we are initializing the supervise. We are create client. Uh, we accessing the mail and press ID that's passed from our form submission from data. You see here. So this is form data passed as a data parameter. And here we're just using the sign in with OTP. With Google, we use this just uh, sign in with uh, OAuth. And here with uh, OTP, but the same kind of logic. Uh, pass the email, uh, pass the options. Important to pass the correct redirect. And here I see the suggestions to encode it. Uh, why I'm using encode? Let's say in this case, like this is this needed to be encoded. So yeah, but for example, for the price ID, when you are sure it's like that, just um, like a normal characters, it's not really important. But let's keep it encoded. I think it's a nice practice just to prevent like bugs and issues here. And if if error, we are sending back the error message. So we will show the error state. And how we are usual, utilizing this, you see we have this magic link that state the success that we will show if the success is not empty. The same goes for them. Yeah, we have the form with action that will submit all this. You see these hidden fields with the form data. It will be added to the form data so we will get access. So if the price ID in the in the search bar um, not empty, we will pass it right here. And you will also see this state.error so if the state is error, if something goes wrong, the user will see them. What is what is like what is wrong with the code? Here is the, the way to change the mode. And for the Google, it's just one button that executes the, the logic and the loading state. So now let me explain what will happen. So the u user will click uh, Google sign sign in. We will pass all the options. The user will be redirected to Google link. And after successful uh, authentication, the user will be redirected to the basically to the URL that we provided. What is this? What is this API out callback? Let's see. So we need to create a separate API route in the API folder. You can call it whatever you want, but I usually make like out folder and make like a callback folder inside with the row.ts. And here we just have the get request. We are getting everything we passed. So all the parameters that we passed from the client that we passed that, that we need to like change our logics based on, we pass it here and we access in here. See, we decode in the, the things we, we need the access to. Also, we are accessing to the code. So the code will be added to the URL all the time. So the code will allow to Superbase to exchange the code. This is the most important thing, exchange the code for the user session. Up to this action, up to this event, the user will be authenticated in your app and you will have access to the user. So this is important. This is the most important thing. Uh, apart from this, everything is like um, secondary. So here we access the user and some commented code that it's not um, not implemented in this app. I just want you to showcase. Let's say we, after the successful uh, session code exchange, we want to create like a default default uh, data for the user, like add the avatar, uh, uh, cha change some roles, add some permissions. We can do this here because after this step, we have the user stored. So we are like can freely do whatever we want with the logic. Next, let's say we have the price ID. So if you want the user to see the Stripe page with the Stripe product to pay for this, here we uh, instead of redirecting to the uh, to the like a page destination page, we'll just create a checkout session, and this checkout session will return basically the URL to redirect the user to. And if nothing is passed, if you're just a regular user, execute redirect to the redirect to that we passed from the URL. So in our case, it's, it's going to be test page like where we will show the button to sign out. By the way, quickly mention how to sign out. You just initialize the client and use the um, supervised.out.sign out, just as simple as it is. So now let's test it and I will quickly show you how it's how it's going to look like. So as you seen previously, we have this page. Let's try with the Google. So I will select one of my addresses. And now I see I'm automatically redirected on the test. By clicking sign out, 
now I'm here. The same goes for them for the email. We see log login indications and we see the success indication that we successfully sent them the email. I'm not, go not going to show you the magic link, but basically it's the same practice. You will just receive the link on the, your email inbox and by clicking the link, you will be redirected. And last thing I want to, to, well, to show you. So let's say we have on the, this test page and I want to access the user. So we have this create client. Let's also uh, do const user get await get user and we will console log it to showcase what we get we click google we click choose the same address let's set everything here yeah we're getting everything about the user so it's working correctly one more thing i want to show you before we end this video is what is my um way of accessing the user information so i i fetch the user on the server all the time because this is the only way i can have the information about the user before the page is loaded so I don't really fetch it on the on the client, but if I need, I just use the query that I showed you, this get user, get user function. That is basically just, just a wrapper around like native super base way of getting the user. And I execute it like in the user fact if I need and store it like in a, in, in a local state. But I try always, always try to fetch it on the on the server and pass it down to the client if I need. So if I need to pass like a like this is my client component, let's say, and I want to best I want to have the access to the user there what I will do is I will get a prop called user like this and access it to the to in the client component but it will be fetched on the server so then I can execute and like make sure the information in my app is secure and everything is correctly so this is it I hope this useful this is useful for you I hope you found something like interesting and something new in this video uh, please check the code in the description get it yourself use it in your own projects and build like some cool stuff thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye bye